Okay, so I was asked to uh, talk about uh, the uh, anatomy, uh, endoscopic anatomy of the ventricular system in vivo, uh, which is something I think very important uh, for uh, all neurosurgeons uh, who want to perform any procedure uh, with an endoscope inside the ventricles. We always need to understand and know anatomy first. And nowadays it is possible to explore almost uh, every corner of the four ventricles uh, of the ventricular system. And we can do that because uh, uh, we can use a flexible endoscope. Of course, uh, with a rigid endoscope, you have a very nice uh, uh, view and uh, good quality images uh, of the lateral ventricle and of most of the third ventricle. But with the flexible scope, you can move everywhere. And this is possible because it perfectly adapts to the complex and irregular geometry of the ventricular system. So let's start with the lateral ventricles. The first structure you see after entering the, the lateral ventricle is, of course, the Monroe foramen uh, with the uh, columns of the fornix here. And you can see, of course, the choroidal plexus running on the floor of the lateral ventricle and the thalamus striate vein here, which is covered by uh, the lamina affixa thalami here. And if you follow uh, the choroidal plexus uh, and the thalamus striate vein, they lead you directly to the Monroe foramen. Uh, you can also see the septal vein here and uh, the septum pellucidum here. Uh, of course, if you bend the tip of the scope all the way to the back part of the lateral ventricle, you can also inspect the occipital horn. But if you enter the Monroe foramen, uh, the first structures in the third ventricle you can see, of course, are the mammillary bodies here. And in front of the mammillary bodies, uh, the tuber cinereum, which is the area where we perform third ventriculostomy, as you all know. If you move your uh, scope even further, in front you can see the infundibulum, the optic chiasm, and the lamina terminalis. Uh, if you move the scope uh, to the back part uh, of the third ventricle, like we are doing here, uh, the aditum of the cerebral aqueduct appears. As long as, as well as uh, the posterior commissure, uh, the pineal recess, the habenular commissure. This is the suprapineal uh, recess. And in some cases, we can also inspect the roof of the third ventricle with the choroidal plexus. And this is the internal cerebral vein. And in these uh, two uh, left bottom uh, images, uh, you can see a very uh, interesting and unusual anatomy of the of the anterior part of the third ventricle, which I inspected uh, in one case uh, through a fourth ventricular uh, approach from posterior fossa. Uh, here you have a very nice view of both uh, Monroe foramen, foramina and the triangular recess and the anterior commissure. Uh, with the flexible scope, if the uh, aqueduct is not stenotic, like in this case, you can explore the cerebral aqueduct and you can uh, see all five parts uh, of it. Of course, the aditum, as we have seen, but also the first constriction, the ampulla, which is this enlargement in the middle part of the cerebral aqueduct, and the second constriction here, and the egressus, which leads you, of course, uh, inside the fourth ventricle. In the fourth ventricle, there is a number of uh, structures. Uh, you can clearly distinguish the choroidal plexus above the cerebellum here. Uh, this is, of course, the roof of the fourth ventricle. And you can also explore the floor of the fourth ventricle, which is the brainstem. Here, you can see uh, the facial colliculi, this and this. But if you move the scope uh, even further uh, towards the inferior triangle, you can see these. These are the acoustic strie. And in some cases, you can see uh, on the floor of the fourth ventricle, even the vagus and hypoglossal triangles. Uh, if you uh, go even deeper into the fourth ventricle, you can get to the inferior triangle of the fourth ventricle 
like we are doing right now. This is the canalis centralis medullaris here, and this is the area of the obex. Here we are exploring the right Lushka foramen with its choroidal plexus. And here you have the Magendi foramen down here. We, will, we can see it here in these pictures on the left part. Uh, you can also see in these pictures uh, the pica. Uh, in some specific cases, we intravenously inject uh, uh, fluorescent sodium uh, to uh, have a clearer vision of, for example, some intraventricular tumors uh, we want to uh, do a biopsy of. But in normal anatomy, uh, this fluorescent sodium highlights uh, something that would be otherwise invisible, like uh, this tiny subependymal, sub, uh, subependymal vascular network. And as you can see, with normal light, you are not able to clearly distinguish this uh, thin vascular network. But with the fluorescence, uh, this vascular network becomes very clear. But probably the most intriguing application of fluorescent sodium uh, in uh, uh, intraventricular uh, endoscopy uh, is the one referred to the possibility to visualize some of the uh, circumventricular organs. In this patient, here we are at the level of Monroe foramen. Of course, this is the choroidal plexus, as you can, uh, uh, of course, see. This is the third ventricle with the mammillary bodies. Here, tuber scenarium. Nothing is visible, but with uh, fluorescence mode, the median eminence appears. And this is the organum vasculosum lamina terminalis, which you cannot see with normal light, actually. So I think in the case of the median eminence, this circumventricular organ at the level of tuber scenarium, it's very interesting uh, to think about it because uh, that's the place where we do the third ventriculostomy, thinking that no function uh, is uh, in the uh, tuber scenario. And actually, uh, some function is present also at the level of tuber scenario. Uh, now we are moving inside the fourth ventricle. And also in the fourth ventricle, we can distinguish a circumventricular organ here. This is the area postrema. Uh, see here we are at the inferior triangle. This is the canalis centralis medullaris. Here is the obex. With normal light, you cannot distinguish this circumventricular organ, which is important for, for example, vomit uh, or hiccup. Uh, but with fluorescence mode, you can clearly distinguish this uh, circumventricular organ like two leaves diverging from the central, uh, the central medullary canal. So to conclude, uh, uh, flexible endoscopy allows uh, the vision uh, of the anatomy uh, of the uh, ventricular system from a very new perspective. And we counted at least 47 anatomical landmarks uh, inside the fourth ventricles. Uh, and with fluorescence, uh, we are able to visualize uh, some structures that would be otherwise completely invisible, like uh, subependymal vascular network and some of the circumventricular organs. Thank you very much. <laughs>